I got a show December 11th in Kansas City. It's uh, my CD release party, so there's a flyer by the door. If you're interested, you can make it that way. Meanwhile, we're going to hear what Mike Weaver has to say. So, thanks for being here. If I can figure this thing out here. Uh, yeah, I think that works. Hello, Jazz House. How we doing tonight? All right, I got a few things for you. I read this piece um, for Thanksgiving last year, and so since it just passed and I spent half of Black Friday in the parking lot pushing sh shopping darts by hand, I thought I would read it again. Um, this piece is called The Thing I'm Grateful For. I'm grateful for Hallmark versions of our holidays, for Charlie Brown style American misunderstandings. Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. You know how I know? Because my ancestors, the Vikings, had been coming here for 500 years before Columbus. They told people about it. They made maps. They showed them to everyone. So the only people in the world that didn't know that the world was, was round were the laity. Thanksgiving is not the origin of our country. Jamestown, settled in 1607, was the origin of our country. Plymouth Rock was the beginning of Purit Puritarianism in our country. And what a tasty dish it is. It's a lot like turkey. It puts me to sleep. <laughs> it was a day to be remembered, a day when white people realized the turkey was delicious and that we wanted all the turkeys. We said, that was a delicious meal. I'd be willing to kill all of you for it. <laughs> so, we just ate, so we're gonna take a nap, but when we get up, all the turkeys will be ours. Thanks Thanksgiving was the beginning of religious extremism in this country. It's about a bunch of S&M religious nut jobs that killed thousands of people for things they would have given them for free. If the natives knew who they were dealing with, they would have let us starve. So let me ask you, are you grateful? Thank you. All right. My uh, second piece tonight is uh, going out to a friend who's been going through a rough patch. He told me this was his favorite piece a few months ago, so I figured I would read it. Apparently his girlfriend broke up with him and then he moved out and shit. It's fucked up. But anyway, uh, this piece is called My Goldfish is Smarter Than You. <laughs> Behold the wisdom of the goldfish as it eats its own poop. <laughs> Uh, behold the wisdom of the goldfish as it eats its own poop. Consider the logic of this decision. Where is a goldfish's shit supposed to go? He's breathing it, he's drinking it, so we might as well eat it. He has the wisdom to realize what his environment is really made of. Do you know why your feet stink at the end of the day? When you sweat, you secrete fats, salts, and other delicious treats that bacteria eat like cotton candy. That's a Beekman's World reference, if any of you remember Beekman's World. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, when, some, when you're sweaty and someone tells you that you smell like shit, they're right, in a very literal way. So, uh, did you know that you are breathing and ingesting everything you smell? Remember that the next time you go to a public restroom. Very prevalent in a bar, I might add. And dirt. Don't get me fucking started on dirt. Did you know that every molecule of dirt on this planet has been digested a million times by earthworms? This is a world of shit, and you're covered in it. You breathe it, you walk on it, and you are covered in it. So the next time you encounter someone using Perel for the thousandth time, <laughs> or is afraid to shake your hand because they might get germs, simply point out that a goldfish eating his own shit is smarter than them. Thank you very much. All right. This is my last piece. Um, I was talking to some people on Facebook, and 
and all of a sudden they started gay bashing, which really pisses me off. And some of them were in my family, which makes which pisses me off. But some of them were old friends, which pisses me off more because they're not necessities; they're people that I welcomed into my life. And so I got really pissed off because. I don't understand why some people think that racism is wrong, but homophobia is okay. Uh, to me, intolerance is intolerance, and if you're oppressing someone, you're oppressing everyone. That's my hippie narration on that. Uh, so I got really pissed off and I wrote this piece. It's called Unnatural Beliefs Over and Under Natural Acts. Here's a fun fact. Bats have the highest ratio of homosexual males of any mammal. I wonder if that would have changed Bruce Wayne's mind when he chose his symbol. <laughs> it didn't change the choice in Robin. <laughs> well played, sir. Maybe that's why he's so afraid of them. Or so alone. Maybe that's why the Joker picks on him so much. In any case, bats are gay. Really, really gay. <laughs> Penguins too. Fireflies. Not that that should surprise anyone. That proves that, homo that proves that homosexuality is not caused by a devil, a hell, predestination, a choice, or Al Pacino. <laughs> Nature creates it all by itself, in every animal, including us. Not fictitious sounding demons. You know what I believe in? Reincarnation. I believe in this for two reasons. One, because it's much more convincing than anything that conventional religions are putting out. And two, because right now, I like to think that Jerry Falwell is taking a huge bat cock in the ass. <laughs> and that Fred Phelps has an even bigger one waiting for him when he dies. <laughs> that all gay bashers have a bat, a penguin, or a firefly waiting for them in the next life with a huge cock. <laughs> no clouds or hearts, just cocks for all eternity. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of having a dialogue with people that disagree with me. However, after countless attempts, I've realized that when it comes to racists and the homophobic, you can't convince someone to love a person that they hate because of their principles. That, to me, is the saddest thing in the whole fucking world. That we waste our lives hating, or trying to, or trying to, <laughs> let me start that again. That we waste our lives hating, or trying to convince other people not to hate, people who mean us no harm. How heartless you people can be is disgusting to me. Well, not you people, specifically. But you never know who's gonna walk through these doors. So, if you are one of these people, go fuck yourself. <laughs> With something long and wide. Ow! Who knows, you might find something you like. And if not, you'll get some perspective and not hate something without, without knowing anything about it. And, because, isn't that what makes someone hate another? A lack of understanding and an overly tight sphincter. Thank you very much. That's it for me, I'm Mike Weaver. Thank you so much, Mike. I love it when you come out.